Good morning. Welcome to Community Unitarian Universalist Church here in Plano, Texas. Uh, my name is Reverend Dr. Aya Dolm. I am the minister of this congregation, and I'm so glad to see all of you here. Uh, we come together for worship in person and online. Um, thank you for those who are joining us online and watching us every single week. Um, we come together for support. We come together to learn from each other and grow. We come together to work for justice um, and things that we believe to need to be righted. We also come together to lean on each other for support, especially during some difficult days. As uh, we approach the election day, it is, I know, it is one of those difficult days. And it is important that we come together to nourish our spirits and move together in our collective power. Many of us have already voted, yes. Um, some of us will still do, um, but Tuesday is the last day of voting. News reports say that there has been a really great turnout. Um, we may not know the results yet on Tuesday night because a lot of counting will still happen afterwards, so we still have to sit and wait for the results. This is not the only difficult day. Um, there's more than just election um, that makes days difficult. So today's service is about grounding ourselves in the values that we hold and in the communities, in the community here, that hold us up when the going gets difficult. It is about people who offer their shoulder to us when we need one. And it is about all that support that we give and that we receive. That on those difficult moments, during those difficult moments, and make those, that support makes those moments a little bit more bearable. It's a little bit more easier when we have someone with us. Just to be together with one another, holding one another, and reminding one another that we are not alone in this time. Wherever you are on your journey, you're welcome here. For the call to worship, Steve and I will be reading it together. It was written by Jay Atkinson. Some of us are struggling with sorrow or grief, but are afraid to reach out for help. Some of us are sick of ourselves and others, but don't know what to do about it. Some of us just want to be ourselves, but it seems that other people won't let us. Some of us want to make the world a better place, but feel overwhelmed by the forces of inertia and self-interest. Some of us aren't sure what we need, but hope we can find it here. We gather in this community, sometimes in fear, sometimes in trust, sometimes in pain, sometimes in joy, but always in hope that we can support and strengthen one another in our common quest for healing and wholeness. Come, let us worship together. A covenant is the promise that we make with one another about the way we will walk together as a community, as a congregation. Please join me in reminding ourselves of this promise. Love is the spirit of this church, and service is its law. This is our great covenant, to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth and freedom, and to help one another. Today, um, it's a special day for us. 
We will offer our gratitude to all who supported us through last year after the firebombing, after the struggles that we went through. Um, if you remember July 23, that was the night at midnight, somebody threw um, and sit, um, a bomb, and Cindy, you know, that word, a bomb uh, to our front door. It burnt um, the door, it burned some foyer, um, and it was the night from Saturday on Sunday. So we all went, still came here for a service um, using the back door, and we were using the back door for a while until we cleaned up and repaired the door. Um, not just the door got damaged, our hearts and our souls got hurt through this <coughs> incident. And we came together, we supported each other. We also received a lot of support from all over the world. So all over the United States, and we also received cards um, even from New Zealand. We displayed these cards all throughout the hallways. You can see some pictures. We also had them all around here in the sanctuary as well um, as a reminder of how many people were holding us through those days. Then later in November, we received those paper cranes from the uh, church in Cherry Hill from New Jersey. They were thinking about us in November and made 1,000 paper cranes because that is how many you need to make for a wish to come true. And their wish was peace. They sent that, uh, the gift to us and said that is all here. Um, we also held a service um, as part of our working through this um, tragic uh, event where we um, came together and shared what we love about this church. If you remember, we had paper on that, those walls, that wall right there, and you were drawing and writing things that you love about this place, this church. Um, our artists, we have Jen Mason, Chris Spencer, and Mina Daphne. They are standing right there. They're ready to reveal the banners, right? They used the cards. They used that service where we wrote what we love about this church, and they made artwork out of these things. Today is our day when we are going to see them. We're going to reveal those banners because there are three of them, and they all are complete. They all are ready. You probably remember seeing one of them uh, in February during the heart service. It was made from cards, so cut out pieces of those cards that we received. That's what it is. The second one you saw uh, in July, um, it was a tree, and the tree branches, the leaves, are the things that we, you all wrote, what you love about this church. So that's this, and the symbol is of life and growth, right? So we're still growing. We're still um, uh, li uh, carrying life here. Uh, and uh, the last piece that you haven't seen yet some of those cards had symbols of chalice, and I think you can barely see them on this, these pictures, but there were quite a few cards that had the same symbol, chalice, on them, and that gave an inspiration to our artists, the chalice as a symbol of our faith, the faith that brought us through, that carried us through, that hold us, held us together, and so the third banner is a chalice. So today we want to thank first for to, uh, people who worked hard to hang them. And that was um, Mike Edgmond and uh, Mark Rachel right here. Thank you so much for your work <laughs> hanging them up. We want to thank our artists. Uh, Mina, Jen, and Chris for making them. And now, let us see the banners. If you have a picture, feel free to take a photo afterwards.
new things need to be recognized and appreciated. So what we will do is a, a dedication. To dedicate means to set something aside for a particular purpose. And what would be the purpose for these banners? To remind us that compassion lives here. To remind each and every one who sees these beautiful art pieces that there is goodness in the midst of difficult days, in the midst of heartache. That we are not alone, but held in care and love of others. Some of whom we have never met, but we are connected through our faith, through love, through our human beingness. So now we dedicate these banners to all who are here supporting us now, to all those in the future who will walk through these doors and see the banners. May they bless this place. May they bless each one who are touched by them. And may they connect us together with one another with creativity, beauty, goodness, and wonder. Difficult days. We all have them. Sometimes these are not just days, but weeks or even months. When we struggle to get through the day, when our energy levels are low, when hope is dim, when our hearts and souls cannot stop worrying or crying. Some of these difficult days we share together, all of us. Those are the collective experiences that sometimes can be very traumatic. When pandemic came, it upset our world upside down and brought many losses with it. We are still carrying the effects of this trauma. We're still remembering how we had George Floyd killed in the aftermath of trying to bring to light that black lives do matter in this country, in this world. We also had January 6th, an event that I thought would never ever happen in the free world country like the United States, but it did. Shaking us up from our naivete and placing another trauma on our hearts and minds. Difficult days. This year elections are difficult. The choices are so opposite and we can no longer hope that in four years we will have our chance to win because we do not know whether we will live in a democracy after these elections. We also do not know if the elections will be accepted by both candidates and what may come if they do not accept the result. Those are our collective difficult days. Reverend Dr. Elizabeth Stevens, a UU minister, specializes in how to work in, with trauma in congregations. She experienced a second active shooting situation in 10 years in her small town, Moscow, Idaho, and worked with her congregation, neighbors and friends, working through trauma and pain. She says, healing wasn't an intellectual process, but an embodied unfolding. 
I gave myself the space to be baffled and brokenhearted, a space to lament. And I held space for other confusing and grieving people, bearing witness to one another in love and celebrating the miraculous ways that together we discovered a deeper resilience, a greater wisdom. The paradox is this, she continues. The only way I have been able to move through trauma is to sit and stay. Somehow, the things that are too much to bear alone are bearable together. Today, we expressed our gratitude to all who supported us through an unimaginable trauma, the firebombing of this church. We saw the banners made from cards that we received from all over the world. And we dedicated these banners to be a reminder of our resilience, our compassion, and connectedness to one another. These banners show how much goodness is in this world, how much there is care out there, how love sustains and holds us even through very difficult times. Art is a tool that helps us to create new images of traumatic events. The heart that shows compassion, that, that we know lives here because this is who we are here in this community. The tree, the symbol of life and growth. And we are growing just today. We added three more members. We keep growing not only in numbers, we keep growing in understanding ourselves, this world, and one another. In the chalice that represents our faith, that holds us and gives us meaning and hope. The banners are visual representation of our ability to get through difficult times to recover and lift up the beautiful parts of life. Because compassion, care, and love is in each one of us. This is who we are. We are the community where compassion lives, where people come together and hold one another in love and care. And in that story that internet seems to have attributed to Alan Alexander Milne, I was looking up trying to find which book it is, and I came across a comment that says, it's not in any of the books. It's the internet misappropriation. So if you do find which book it is, please let me know. But in this story, it seems very true to Winnie the Pooh and Piglet that it really could have happened when Winnie the Pooh is having a difficult day and the piglet comes and sits with Winnie the Pooh. And just sitting there, swinging his legs, because this story reminds us that we don't need to be talking. We often worry that we will not know what to say when somebody's going through a difficult time. There were no words in the story. Being there was what was meaningful. Holding space, holding one another, is what helps us to get through the difficult days. And we know this. We held one another through pandemic. We held one another through January 6th. We held through another when we had to close the building because of floods, we held one another when we had the fire bombing. We came together to find resilience together, to find wisdom together. 
because we are stronger together, just like that bundle of sticks that we were putting together earlier in the story. When we are together, we are stronger. So as we anticipate the election results, if you would like to be together with others, come here on Wednesday. I will be here, I will make tea. Uh, I reserved two times at three o'clock for those who don't wanna drive at night and at six o'clock for those who need to work during the day. Just come be here, we may celebrate the results, we may grieve the results, or most likely we will still be waiting for the results. But if you need to be together, come on this Wednesday to be together with one another. If you want to make bring cookies or snacks, feel free, but I will bring tea for everyone. There's a story about uh, hikers who were walking on a cliff, and suddenly there were three of them, and one of them fell. The other two were yelling and um, asking, are you okay, are you okay, what, are you, you know, what is happening? And he said, I'm okay, I'm okay, I just broke two arms. <laughs> they said, okay, well, we'll just swing down the rope um, and we'll bring you up. So they did, they um, pull, uh, swing down the rope and they are pulling him up and they keep pulling and then they suddenly remembered that he broke both arms. How are you holding the rope? And when he got, the, the hiker got up, he said, with my teeth. <laughs> so we will hold one another with teeth if necessary, but we will not let go. May we have courage to sit and stay to bear witness to the brokenness as well as to the beauty. To remember that as I hold others in love, I too am held in turn by the great love that abides. Amen. Maureen Killer and wrote these words, and I offer these to you as we go forward into the next week. No matter how weak or how frightened we may feel, we each have gifts that can make a difference in the world. In this coming week, may you do at least one thing to support the broken, to welcome the stranger, to celebrate what is worthy, to do the work of justice and love. Be strong, be connected each day. Act so you may be a little bit more whole. Let us go, reminded that we are held in this community. Amen.